you ask the kids this question, what is work? They will immediately say school or homework. But if you ask them, what is play? Their immediate answer is most likely video games or online games. What if we could merge work and play? Clearly, there should be a way to help kids learn from what they do and enjoy best, playing. In that case, let us talk about gaming in the classroom. How can we integrate games in our classroom? There are actually two processes. First, we can make use of gamification or game-based learning. These are two related but different processes. Both of, both of them can be used to achieve the learning outcomes. Let us try to compare the two processes. For gamification, you're adding game-inspired elements to your class. We are going to discuss these different game-inspired elements in a while. Second, applying game mechanics to a non-game environment to encourage desired behavior. The classroom and learning is definitely a non-game environment. So what you do in gamification is you apply game mechanics in this environment. Gamification typically incorporates badges, awards, and achievements. XP or experience points may be used as substitute for grades, and this could provide students with choice in the learning path. In short, what you do in gamification is like you transform the learning process, you transform the classroom into a game. But game-based learning is different in that you just use the games to meet learning outcomes. It's like game, a game is part of the activity. It's one of the activities in your class. The learning comes from the game. This promotes critical thinking and problem solving. Might involve simulations to allow students to experience the learning. Let's first focus on gamification or adding game-inspired elements to your class. What are these game dynamics or game-inspired elements? First dynamic, the story dynamic. Wrap them up in the story. I mean, who doesn't want a good story? And to make it even better, the students can have a say on how the story will, will progress. Because some games tell emotionally gripping and cinematic stories, and then they add elements of interactive control and player choices that forward the storyline. How exciting it could be to have your students play characters in your class in a very good story. So that's the first game dynamic, the story dynamic. The second element or the second game dynamic that you could add to your class is the failure dynamic. Fail early, fail often. This is very common in games where there are different levels. The students or the, the players are given a chance to play a certain level and if they fail, they can retry. So what if we can also incorporate that in our classes? We just set a certain learning goal for our students, set a certain time frame, and for as long as they can achieve this learning goal, they can try and try uh, as much as they want. So in that case, we're trying to incorporate the failure dynamic or fail early, fail often element to our class. The third dynamic or the third element is the flexibility dynamic. It's providing multiple paths to success because in real life, there's no single way to succeed in a task. There are many different ways that a learner can adapt in order to achieve the target. I came across this online game called Paths to Success. Let me read the details of the game. Set out in search of your place in the sun in Path to Success, a casual life sim with a world of opportunities. The sky's the limit as you create and customize your character and then hit the streets of the big city with nothing but a few dollars and a dream. Go to college, get a great job, decorate your penthouse suite, eat at the best restaurants, and compete in challenges against virtual friends as you leave your fantasy one day at a time. Just remember to rest so you can face tomorrow. The full version of Paths to Success features 42, imagine, 42 career paths. So that's like 42 different ways to win in this game. 
28 locations to visit, and more than 40 challenges. And they end with the, the following. It's your life. What are you going to do with it? So what we see here in, is there's a lot of options. There are a lot of options and there, there are lots of flexibility in how they can be successful in the game. So try to incorporate that also in your class. The fourth dynamic or the fourth element is the progression dynamic. Scaffold and recognize pro progress. In Pokemon Go, for example, as a player progresses, more rewards will be earned which they can use to increase the success in the levels. So you can also try that out in your class. As the students progress in certain levels within your uh, class, within the topics that they are taking, then you could give them more rewards. These rewards will enable them to be more successful in the next topics. So that's the fourth dynamic, the progression dynamic. And finally, the construction dynamic. Build something that matters. The example that I can uh, show you is the game called Minecraft. The creative and building aspects of Minecraft enable players to build constructions out of textured cubes in a 3D procedurally generated world. Exploration, resource gathering, crafting, and combat. These are some of the things that they can do. These allow players a large amount of freedom in choosing how to play the game. And you know, there's always something gratifying in building something rather than destroying something. In, my, in Minecraft, the gamers build stuff rather than destroy stuff, which I think is a breath of uh, fresh air as far as uh, gaming is concerned. So you can also think of ways by which you can have students construct something or build something. In that case, you're uh, incorporating the construction dynamic in your class. So, so far, those are the game dynamics that we can incorporate in our classes. Again, just a review. The story dynamic, the failure dynamic, the flexibility dynamic, the progression dynamic, and the construction dynamic. Let us now proceed to game-based learning. This time, you're not incorporating game-inspired elements. Instead, you are actually using a game to meet the learning outcome. And so what I would like to discuss are the different criteria for choosing educational games to incorporate in your class. First criterion, winning should be based on knowledge or skills, not random factors or chats. Let's try to see this sample game called Space Odyssey. Let me read to you the instructions. Your health bar will decrease with every hit from the enemy and every question that is answered wrongly. Once your health bar is empty, you lose the game. So, of course, there, there are certain, to some, to some extent, there are skills that the students need to, uh, to apply here. But the most important thing is their health bar will decrease if they answer the question wrongly. So, it will still depend on their knowledge or skills of the topic for them to have uh, a good health bar and for them to continue to play the game. That's the first criterion. The second criterion is the game should address important content, not trivia. The, co the questions should be based on the topic that you have. For example, this is a, a multiple choice question found in a certain game. Salt is a dietary mineral composed primarily of blank that is essential. And there are options A, carbon dioxide, B, sodium hydroxide, C, sodium chloride, D, hydrogen chloride. They have to answer this correctly in order to progress to the game. So the game is actually addressing an important part of the content. The third criterion, the dynamics of the game should be easy to understand and interesting for the players. This is a sample game that is good for uh, elementary students. It's called the giant sandwich. Let me read the instructions. Create a delicious sandwich for a customer. Answer all the multiple choice questions correctly to get all the ingredients required for a, for, for, for a perfect sandwich. 
Use the left and right arrow keys to move your bread and place it below the correct option along the kitchen counter. Collect one sandwich ingredient for each correct, correct answer. So the point of the game is they can make the best sandwich if they get all the questions correctly. So that's pretty easy to understand and uh, interesting also for the players. The fourth criterion, students should not lose points for wrong answers. Let's have this example, My Own Little Farm. That's the title of the game. Um, let me read to you the instruction. Have you ever wanted to have a farm? In this game, you will have a chance to do so. Answer 10 multiple choice questions and for every correct answer, you will win an item which you can then put in your farm. Okay, the, the students are not technically losing points for wrong answer. The only thing is, of course, their farms will have less items if they, uh, if they only get a few items correctly. But if they get all the items, then they can get more items to make their farm more beautiful. So that's the next criterion. Last criterion, games should not encourage only one player to achieve an ultimate win. That's not, that's not uh, advisable for educational games, that there is only one ultimate winner. All players, all students should be given chance to win. If you read paper studies about gamification or game-based learning, you will uh, realize that there are contrasting views about using games in the classroom. Some agree that it has good effect on student achievement. Some do not agree that they have good effect on student achievement. So the group of Robert Marzano did a research on um, uh, how we can get the most out of games. So they came up with four reminders to get the most out of games. First, use inconsequential competition. Students like to compete as long as the stakes are not high. Throughout the year, the teacher can reorganize the teams so that all students have the experience of winning and losing. Next, target essential academic content. Because if you don't make use of essential academic content, if you don't make use of uh, relevant topics, the use of game will just be a waste of time. So make sure to target essential academic content. Number three, it's very important to debrief the game. After having the students play a game, you should not leave it at that. The teacher should process the game. Example, identify difficulties uh, or clarify important concepts after the game. And finally, have students write notes. Have students revise their notes. Students must have opportunities to revise their understanding of the content as time goes by. After the activity, a teacher should give time for students to review and revise these notes. Those are the reminders so that we can get the most out of games in our classroom.